Good evening all, and welcome to my book review of Osamu Tezuka's The Book of Human Insects. Uh, he, a book he penned um, in 1970 to 71, so it didn't really take him that great of an amount of a time for how thick it is. Um, anyway, it's, uh, it's published by Vertical Inc. And uh, I've just finished it within the last few days, um, and it, it is fantastic. Um, basically, uh, it centres around a character called um, Toshiko Tomura. Um, and she she has the ability to basically mimic anybody she spends a significant amount of time with. Um, say, she does it effortlessly. Say, say like, she, um, like, the story opens up with uh, her um, winning the uh, Akutagawa um a book award for best new Japanese author, and um, she she basically got those writing talents from spending a time with uh, um, a, a girl she uh, she shared rooms with in college, and uh, she, the the girl she shared a room with with was a, a writer, and um, she basically just instinctively learned how to write like this 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 uh, college friend, uh, and the story just basically goes on. Um, it it doesn't have any sort of uh, particular plot or anything. There's no sort of goal towards the end of the story. It just literally takes you through a segment of her life um, with her moving from person to person, mimicking different people, um, just acquiring these different skills from these talented people and basically ruining people's lives um, because whatever skill she gains, she adds upon those skills and uh, basically takes whatever seal you have makes it better and takes all the credit for what whatever it is you've done so say like when uh basically the book she came out with was um also in the story is actually called the book of human insects um she she took all the credit for it she won a prestigious prize for it um became really famous and the original author of the actual book was unknown to anybody because nobody actually knew uh you know that she completely plagiarized the work she she goes on um gets into stage and drama um learns the skills of acting directing and basically pushes everybody out of their of, of their roles and uh basically keeps ruining people's lives and it's it's interesting as well because as the main character she's really dark and she she she's like a femme fatale um, she gets most of what she wants through sex. She, it's like, she, she doesn't, in the start of the story, um, because her, uh, her character progresses slightly. In, in the start of the story, she's not as dark as she is towards the end. It's like when, um, she, she doesn't appear to, uh, act out of malice. It's like she gains these skills just through instinct alone, just by, just literally by spending time with people and speaking to people and, she she just literally learns these skills just through that. The original title of the book was um, The Human Metamorphosis and personally I think that makes a little bit more sense because it's referenced a few times throughout the story um, that she, she's like an insect who's basically shedding her skin uh, and constantly reinventing herself as a different person, um, kind of similar to how, you know, like basically like a, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly, that sort of thing. One thing to note as well, um, throughout the story, coming towards the end, but she it's, it's more evident that she has more of a superiority complex as she starts to um, almost enjoy um, basically ruining people's lives because she knows that she's getting one up on these people. And it, it's it's really it's really interesting. See, it kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Light Yagami from uh, Death Note, actually. Um, the guy with the god complex. And I know they're from two completely different eras, but you can see how uh, Sugomi Obu, um, I think he was the guy who wrote Death Note, um, sort of gained influence, perhaps maybe from, from um, Toshiko Tomura, um, that character. Um, obviously, Osamu Tezuka is the god of manga. He was influential on a lot of people, probably every single mangaka in Japan today would be able to um, reference one of their characters or one of their works from Osamu Tezuka himself. Uh, going on, anyway, um, there's a lot of good things I've got to say about this series, really. I mean, the story's really, really engaging. 
when you're reading it you feel like just everybody is in just a, a terrible situation like no no one character is going to win you don't particularly feel good for any character even Toshiko herself because one thing to say about her is that she's she's really 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 mentally scarred it doesn't particularly go into like her history there's no flashbacks or anything of her life before the start of the story it's just literally you go along with her everything's live and direct but whatever happens uh, in her past must have really screwed her up because um she's kind of uh every now and then she kind of comes out of the limelight out of the stardom to go back to her home where she grew up and um there she's got a uh, a wax model of her dead mother who um occasionally she'll go strip naked and pretend to breastfeed and there's no particular explanation for that all you know all you can get from those scenes is that she is just a screwed up person she is completely batshit crazy and it, it's brilliant to see somebody i mean for the time this work came out back in the 1970s just you know just not of its time osamu tezuka totally i mean he he had he had balls to write something like that i mean you know, I, I don't know whether or not that would have been accepted back then. Obviously it was because, you know, it got critical acclaim, but I, I think only Osamu Tezuka could have written something like that and, and, and gained success from it, to be honest. Um, one thing, one other thing about the series as well is that um, there's a, it's set into chapters, but you don't really feel like you're moving from chapter to chapter. It's like a, I was watching a movie, it's got a real cinematic feel to it, you know, really nice sense of pacing. Uh, let's have a look at a little bit of the artwork, actually. see it's only for the amount of pages it is i think it's like just under 400 pages it's only got four chapters and uh it's just you can see i mean the art style is really outdated it, it really is something you have to get accustomed to i mean i got accustomed to it pretty quickly um once i got past the first chapter i was i was that hooked on it that it didn't really bother me at all in the slightest um you can see like the way he structures his panels and just the composition of the artwork on the page itself like you know so many manga artists nowadays have taken such influence from this i mean look those panels where it just kind of shows like a um like a, like a vista of a city scene or whatever just to give the sort of the story a sense of pace you know you see a lot of manga could doing that these days and Obviously, it all came from this guy. Uh, but yeah. I actually really like the artwork. Now, actually reading and, you know, actually enjoying the story. I mean, when I picked it up, I picked it up mainly because it was Osamu Tezuka and I wanted to collect some of his work. But now that I've actually read this and now I know for a fact that I do actually like his work and that he's not just overrated, um, you know, I there's a certain charm to his artwork and one thing i've learned about reading manga is that i'm i'm never i can never judge a work like solely on the artwork alone because i did that when i started reading um one piece uh by ichiro oda and i really didn't like the artwork when i started reading that and from the first volume romance dawn it just had me hooked but that's another review anyway uh i'll probably get around to that but yeah um the artwork is just oh yeah as well there's uh there's a lesbian scene in here <laughs> which is funny um but yeah like i said she gets everything through sex and uh basically coming on to people and it's just oh it's just it's such a brilliant story just the, the ways in which she just screws people over it's just it's genius in a sense, but at the same time, you think to yourself, if I was in that situation, like, like you genuinely feel bad for some of the characters that she, that she screws over. Like, there is a real sense of, of attachment that you, you, you get to some of the characters. I mean, some of the characters are just hopelessly stupid. Like, you know, they, they'll, they'll allow themselves to be screwed over because they're simply in love with Toshiko Tamura. But some of the characters who literally just want to push her away and, like, don't want anything to do with her, like, Toshiko keeps coming back and coming back and just beating them down, beating them down, you know, if if, if the nail sticks up, they'll get beat back down by just Toshiko Tamura's just raw presence. It's really sad. Um, and that's, that, that's one thing about the support characters in this. The, the, the really, the really accent um, Toshiko's ability to ruin people's lives because... There is a such a raw sense of emotion from from 
how how badly done by some of the characters are that it just it it, it reflects so badly on her as a person that it, it, it at the same time it makes her a hateable character but because obviously she's the main character and it's her life we're following I just I really had to appreciate how fantastically she was written just as a character I mean I I would hate to know a person like this personally I mean there's probably people like this who exist and uh, I I would run a thousand miles in the opposite direction if, if if I came faced with a person like this. But to read something like to read um, something like this is, is really entertaining. And you know, it's the age old thing. Like nobody really likes to see a happy ending. I mean, everybody remembers the sad endings. Not not that this particular has a sad ending. You know, you just have to read it to find out. But just just a sad story generally. Um, every, everybody likes to read something that you know. That put you know tugs at the heartstrings or you know makes you angry or or whatever way anything likes to read something that invokes emotion and this really you know I'd highly recommend that for that. Um, what else could I say? Um, I don't really have anything bad to say. Uh, the only th the only real thing I can say is that you really have to get accustomed to the old art style. I mean. From then to now, you know, obviously manga has progressed uh, a massive amount, so it, it it can really seem like really simplistic and like almost like some some of the panels where let me find an example, um, like some some like things like that, you know, people don't realistically run like that, you know, they're practically floating in the air, but it's it, for, for its time, it's just. I don't know, like, I, I took this to mean, because this part is uh, somewhat of a, um, it's not a flashback, but it's kind of like this character here remembering his relationship with Toshiko and kind of reflecting on how great it was before he got screwed over. And, like, this panel here kind of, it's kind of symbolic of their, I mean, the, the way they're kind of floating along there, you know, enjoying themselves, it, it kind of, it's kind of symbolic of, you know, they're kind of like on a high together and you know how great things were back in the day sort of thing that that's what I took it to mean I mean I know I, I'm maybe I'm just reading too deeply into it but that's how I took that but yeah you see there again see more, more symbolism so yeah I guess I'm not reading too greatly into it but yeah um but yeah and anything else bad uh I guess sometimes the dialogue can be pretty heavy in certain places not there were just a certain few instances where I kind of had to like re-go over what was going on, particularly in a story in the back, because it kind of deals a lot with uh, with like economics and politics, and that's not really my forte. So I kind of had to like re-read over a few panels to kind of really get the gist of what was happening. But other than that, it's a really easy story, easy story to follow. Um, like I said, there's no sort of character progression, but for this kind of story, it doesn't particularly need it. Um, like I said, there's no there's no particular plot or goal or anything. So, if if you want to see people's lives getting screwed up and you know some woman basically lording it over the rest of them, then this definitely is the book to read. I highly recommend Osamu Tezuka's uh, The Book of Human Insects, or as it was originally known in Japan, um, Human Metamorphosis. Uh, it's cheaper to buy in paperback. Um, I got the hardback because um, I found it on the shelf. Um, I think it was one of two left, but the hardback is quite, it's quite difficult to find now. Um, I don't know if it's like completely sold out, uh, but yeah, pick up the paperback or hardback or, or whatever, but just definitely pick this up. Um, I highly recommend people to support the official releases. Um, try not to read them online because you're squandering, um, you know, just generations upon generations of influence and talent. You know, definitely pick up. Spot the industry, guys. You know, we love manga. So, yeah, that's all. That's my book uh, of human insects. I'd give this a 8 out of 10. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my review. Thank you very much.